Today I'm talking about the Poisson approximation to the binomial. So say I've got a random variable which is a binomial. I want to compute the probability that x is equal to say 50 given that n is 130. Right, so I punch that into my calculator. I punch this bit which is 130 choose 50 and I can't continue because I get an error message on my calculator. Basically it can't handle it. So this is where we need the Poisson approximation. It's like, you know, I don't need it if I can calculate this thing exactly, but then for big values of n, I get into difficulties doing this calculation. So now let's actually state the result. So suppose like we've got a sequence, this is x subscript n, sequence of random variables at binomial. And let's say you've got y, which is Poisson. I want to show that this binomial, sequence of binomials, tends to a Poisson under a certain condition, being this condition here. This is saying like, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, p falls towards zero in such a way that the product of n times p remains constant, and that's calling it lambda. So in the notation here, x subscript 1, that's binomial n is 1, probability p1, x2, that binomial n is 2, probability p2, and so on. And then, given this condition, we can say that the distribution of the sequence of these binomials tends to a Poisson. Now, to do the proof here, you could work on the probability mass function, showing that this tends to this, as n tends to infinity, but I'm going to show you a quicker proof, and that's using MGFs. Right, here's the important result about the MGFs. So the convergence of MGFs implies convergence in the CDF under given condition. So here is the theorem. So you've got a sequence of random variables, each with an MGF. Then it, if it tends to an MGF that does not depend on I'm calling n, he's calling i here, and this exists for all t around 0, then that implies convergence of the CDF. In other words, in my question here, we want to show, like for each of these binomials, MGFs of binomials, that it tends to the MGF of a Poisson. And this is for the con satisfying condition that it, these MGFs exist for around t is around 0 because then the theorem says that will imply that the CDF of these individual binomials that tends to the CDF of a Poisson and we're done. Alright so let's start, we write down the MGF of a binomial for given uh, n. So here you are and that was shown in problem 50. Now what I've done to the next step is I've multiplied First of all, I've separated to take a common factor of p here, take that second and third term together, group them, and times top and bottom by p gives me this. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I want to apply the following result from calculus. This expression here, the taking 1 plus a constant over n, and taking that to the power of n, and now as n tends to infinity, that tends to e to the a, this constant. So compare this guy with this, match it. So NP is, and NP, everything in the numerator there is A, and it is a constant given T. Because NP, this is the thing about the condition here, NP, it's stated, the condition is that it is a constant. So as N goes up, P falls in such a way that NP stays the same. So we have that this top bit is a constant and so that this whole expression will tend to this I've now replaced NP by lambda because that's what we just call it let's just call that lambda all right but we recognize and also that this is uh, exists for all T on the real line we recognize that this is the MGF of a Poisson with the parameter lambda 
and so using the theorem about convergence of MGFs implies convergence of CDFs we can say then that the limiting distribution of the binomial is Poisson the word limiting distribution is just a, another way to say like that the binomial tends to Poisson as n tends to infinity now the question is when you're looking at proof is like okay do I need to somehow check the condition n times p equals a constant is satisfied the answer is no it's just required for the proof there because in any situation question you're going to have a fixed n right so there are some guides to show when this thing kind of works well and these are just by simulation guys so some guys are just running some simulation cal computer to just uh, kind of look at conditions where it looks reasonable meaning that the shape of say the PMF of the binomial is very similar very close to the shape of the Poisson for some various uh, values for NP and it varies from kind of what book or you know you're, or stuff you're looking at so um, just written some of the common ones down n is bigger than or equal to 20 p is less than or equal to 0.05 another one is that n is large n p is less than or equal to 10 mainly guys just look at what your professor says if we look back at the proof you might think to yourself well how vital is this condition n p is constant how about if we try to do the proof where we don't we drop this n p is constant say we've just fixed p and let n tend to infinity well in that case guys if we try to do a proof that way we're going to be using we're going to require what well, is the central limit theorem so let's just state this result here so we've got binomial remember I've got this binomial we can show using a central limit theorem that the distribution of this guy here the random variable minus its mean divided by its standard deviation i.e. this because that's the mean of binomial that's the variance of binomial here is going to be approximately normal standard normal by the central limit theorem. Well, what's the guide for that? A guide for that, a common guide is that n times p is greater than or equal to 5, but really it depends on p. If p is around a half, then already the binomial is approximately normal, so then n would be very small, like 2 or 3, some books say, will do it. And again, that's just the conditions, a guide here, just by uh, looking at simulation. So we've shown today that using the MGFs, that the limiting distribution of a binomial is Poisson given this condition.